This is the pattern we're going to be painting today. Pretty excited about it. Let's get it up on the screen and let's get started. Okay. I've got a picture for myself. You guys are seeing the exact same picture up above one of these sides. I'll decide the side once I'm in editing. It's, I don't do it ahead of time because I have no idea because sometimes I'll have this up here or over here and I, I, may, I need to make sure that you guys are in frame and can see the shot as best you can before I figure out where I'm going to put the the picture. That's just a little food for thought in case you're wondering. Most of you probably are like, yeah, whatever, Jen, just paint the thing. But it's a leopard spotted, uh, spotted Danio. It's a really cool fish. It's a smallish fish. I think the biggest they get is about two and a half, three inches, and that's saying something. So they are really, really neat little, little freshwater aquarium fish and they're actually I think indigenous to the Philippines or thereabouts somewhere in mid middle Asia of uh, of the planet and in this photograph which you guys probably can't see as well but knowing coming from I've I've kept Daniels before and this is represented in the photograph by a black band but they are a fairly dark almost a shinyish blue most of them are especially the males they get real pretty so what i'm going to do and then the spots underneath of them get a little bit darker i didn't want to waste your time with um spraying white base everybody knows how to do that i would imagine at this point and if you don't it's just you're spraying white base on there i've left the belly of this fairly transparent didn't coat all the way down i coated about two-thirds of the way down i'm going to set this off to the side so i don't get spray all over my phone sure all my there we go and I'm gonna start out with some Spectratex and we're gonna turn the pressure way way down and I'm just gonna go from the first edge on this gill plate there's two sections of gill plate we're gonna go to the forward one on here just gonna put a few drops in here and lower my pressure bring it way down I'm sitting right and I always that's I keep test strips here that I can work with and we can darken this up after the fact which is what we'll end up doing because what I'm going to come over with after I lay down the initial parts of this is probably a detailed black magenta or possibly even like a smoke black a pearl color but I'm going to start right at the tail and move this in a straight line right up to this first section of gill plate. I'm going to go right from the middle of the tail just nice and easy and I can do this I've done it several times so if you're not steady and you go up and down um, and you're not consistent it'll get way wider so if you can have a low enough pressure and be about three at the max maybe four centimeters off of here just go right down the center and then I'm going to come up and do the same thing go right there don't want to get it too thick make sure I have the same consistency on both sides and I don't have that much in the chamber so I'm just going to cast that off and clean the chamber but I am cleaning the chamber between so I'm gonna do that off camera I'll be right back in I'm gonna be using a couple of stencils for this again this is not a difficult pattern to achieve uh, this is an HS 46 creature feature by Anarchy Model UK go see Brian there's always a link in the description below for Brian and Russ alike. Russ Allen being of insane custom stencil fame here in the States. And Brian being across the pond in the UK. So I've got that. Also have, this is like a lizard reptile type skin for a stencil. One of the things that I want to do though on this particular one, 
that's what I want to tape off a little area. I need to tape off a huge area. I'm going to take one piece of tape and I'm going to split it down the middle. And then just on one side, get a good area here that's kind of straight across. I think we can pull it off with this right here and go above it. That right there. So that way, we're not shooting a ton of overspray onto this thing, because if you look at this, there's only that one little area, and we might end up doing a little bit more than that with the stencil, but we're going to get close. So the whole name of the game is getting as close as you can. Now you could use a cry cut, or if you have stenciling tools that can do this type of work, knock yourself out. If you don't, then this is your best bet. You just want to have enough space on this thing to where you can make that pattern. And I've cleaned the chamber out, and we're going to come in with something that's just a little bit darker. And we're going to make this pattern first. Make sure that we have, there we go. Very low pressure. I'm running about 8 PSI. So now we're going to go right below that lateral line that we just made with our blue and with our detail black magenta. I'm going to cover the whole body. And go right down to the tail on that. And try not to hit a whole bunch on the head. Just a little bit and just lift that up there. And we're going to, as we come back through this bait, we're going to make some of the excess disappear through the magic of paint. Make sure this is off, because we're going to do the reverse on the other side. Still using that line and go right underneath and make sure we have Make sure we're not moving the stencil. So now we have that. Now as we come and darken this, I can go right back down the middle again. Make sure we have some flow. And get just a little bit darker. So that blue is going to kind of get muted here. Set that down. Now we're going to pick up this tiny, tiny HS46. And we're going to set that right against there. And I'm going to go all the way on the belly with that. So it just kind of finishes what we started. And again, we're going to make some of this disappear by coming over it with some glitter and Still, we're going to go over this bait with a little bit of pearl white. Hit that belly. But make sure when you guys are doing these marks and using stencils that you don't move the stencil. You have a good hold. Make sure that you have an area where you can kind of stabilize your hand and keep yourself steady. And that way you won't move that back and forth. Just a suggestion. Uh, it's what I do. Now as I'm looking at this reference picture, I'm noticing that there's a little bit of darkness around the nose and the eye and just on the top of the forehead here. So I'm going to go ahead and start shading that. And you guys say this to me all the time, which is I'm flattered, but the bait always starts out looking one way and finishes a completely different way, but that's just because of how the layering goes. You kind of have to look at a bait and see what's underneath and then build those layers on top of that. I'm going to clean this chamber out and I'll be right back in. With this little guy and the picture, which you guys are playing along with the photo as well, there is the slightest hint of a light yellow on the belly and on the top of this. I'm looking for 
preferably a lemon yellow. And I think I have that in my inks. That is a lemon yellow. It's real bright and it's going to it's going to it's going to hit this bait super super bright and then we're going to mute it down with some white. We just have to work in light 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 layers. Cool thing about this stuff is that it shoots real thin. We don't need much of it at all. And it's going to look like that. So I'm just going to hit the top of this with a little bit of yellow and then on the belly. And then we're going to come back over that with almost like an illustration base. I think I might even use an illustration base. If you guys don't know the difference between an illustration base and a regular one, this came up in conversation with Michael Ornstein the other day. We were talking about different types of white. And one of the things that I've noticed with this illustration base is that it takes a little bit longer to dry. And the reason is on stuff like this, it's not really intended, I mean it's intended for an airbrush, but it's intended for stuff like storyboards. If you guys don't know what storyboards are, it's usually a concept piece of art that's given to uh, TV or film or some sort of media that artists use as their rough sketch for how they want a scene to go or how they want, they're telling a story through well, kind of like a comic book. Um, but this stuff has like a 48 hour window on it where you can use illustration base and erase it a lot faster. Which is great for the illustration base and for storyboarding, but for airbrushing when you need stuff to dry, kind of in a hurry, um, it takes a little bit longer. So having said that, I'm going to use very, very light layers in this. And it is super transparent. So this is going to mute it down just enough and throw that white back onto so that it'll really mute down that yellow. And I'm going to have to hit this pretty hard with a heat set at this point. I have not heat set up till this point because it kind of self dries. But I'm at this point muting this down with illustration base that generally, and you can see the color is starting to take shape now too, that generally take a little bit longer to dry. So let me go ahead and heat set this off camera. And it's muted that yellow down quite a bit. And we'll, it's going to get a little bit more muted and then we're probably going to come over one more time just with a little bit of extra detailing. The next thing that I want to do is I want to get this stripe. There's a stripe that goes directly down the middle of this dark area. And I'm going to hand detail that in. And I'm going to use a little bit thicker of a paint. That well, should do. It's fairly thick. I'm just kind of trying to get this paint at a certain consistency. And again, I'm going to work from the tail up to this gill plate. I'm steady in my hand and then just running down this middle lateral line. And if you run out of paint, it's okay. Just steady your hand again and slowly bring it back onto where you were working. And finish that line. Just takes a little bit of practice. It's okay if you goof up. It's, not, it's okay if it's not perfect. And then we can come back and do the same thing to the other side. And I do like to work from the tail forward. Actually, I'm 
that this is kind of getting a little there we go ta-da steady in my hand make sure you guys are in frame let me check that real quick yeah you guys can see what I'm doing it's running right down the middle and I did load enough paint to stay on that time I might have you can take if you if you get this see the drop right there if you guys can see that you can take a dry brush just kind of pull that away or not there we go problem solved just pull that right off like it never happened again this isn't a super super hard pattern just fun something cool to do I've never done a spot of Danio before so I do like a challenge now before we finish this off I'm gonna add in some of this hit it just a little bit and heat set it immediately now this kind of brings the colors out in allure but it also provides a little bit of a pearl essence I've already used this as a baseline flip it this way first we're coming right back over the area we did before where are you area there you are Perfect. Flip it. Make sure you have all that off. And same thing on the other side. All you're doing is going back over the area you've already done, just kind of redefining what needs to happen with this bait. There it is. I'm going to finish the top of this off with that smoke that's still in the uh, chamber and just bring in just a couple make sure we have flow bring in just a couple of lines here a little bit of scaling and then jump to the other side and do the same thing make sure you flip the scales over always good to have your scales running in the right direction get a few on the cheek here very cool and then I just want to kind of finish off the nose here just finish that nose off with a little bit more of a darker shade also going to do the eye socket why you say just because it kind of pushes the silver and the silver eye we're going to use it pushes that out just a little bit more now we're still going to come back again and cover this with some pearlescence I'm going to do real quick I'm come in here with just a little bit of white and kind of redefine the areas around the darker parts of this bait. And just a little bit back towards this tail. I'll turn this down just a little bit. Take this tip off. Make sure that we are good to go here that we're not gonna 
have any dot matrix going on in here. And then just come down and get a little more detail. little bit. Moderately happy with that. Gonna grab a quick heat set on all of this. And now I want to come in with just a little bit of darker shade of black here. Finish the detailing along this lateral line. Take this back off, make sure my tip is clean. You see how thin of a line you can get with this? You can get super thin, super thin. We're just going to come in here and run this down both sides of this lateral line. Just to give it a little bit more depth. right on the tip of the nose. Just a little bit more of this Comart Pearlescent. Just a couple of drops is all you need. Just to finish this off and we should be good. Heat set. Looks like we're going to be able to use a number six eye. And I think for these, I just want to go with the Living Skulls Fish Eyes, if I have in six millimeter. I do. Pretty cool. These are good eyes. You can get them at Fish USA for like three bucks is not bad. I've heard rumors that some folks can get them less expensive. But thus far I have not found them for cheaper than three bucks for 20. But it's not, again, it's not a bad price. Just make sure your pupils are forward. At this point this is pretty much dry. That should fit right in there. Pupils forward. All right, we are ready on this Danio. I'm gonna give you guys a close up look at this before I dump it in clear coat. But uh, I'm relatively happy with how this came out. It is a first attempt at this pattern. It will improve over time, but it's fairly close, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my first attempt at that spotted Danio. Reasonably happy with how this has turned out. Pretty excited about doing it. Like the scaling, I like the uh, opaque pearlescent. Kind of mimics how the scales are going to look. That real pearl shiny color. 
And that is what I've got for you guys. I hope I was able to teach you guys a few things today. I hope you enjoyed the pattern. I, you know, I don't think that there's anything wrong with wanting to paint every fish in the sea. Um, I like it. It's good practice for me. It keeps me edgy. It keeps me always thinking outside of the box. And that's my goal. I'm going to paint as many different patterns because there's just literally thousands and thousands of, of subspecies and species out there. So this is one of the ways that I can keep that edge and continue to learn. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you guys so, so much for the view. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Try this pattern on your own. Hit me up on Facebook or Messenger or Twitter or Instagram. Jekyll424 at Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bait Company, all of my platforms. I'd love to see your interpretation of this bait. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Baits.